Hello and welcome to another budget and leg it video. Now we are back on this Skoda again and again one of the most common uh, questions and answers and, and comments is to test the injectors. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to test the injectors. We're also going to do a manual uh, compression test. Now the tools I've been using in this series is things that make your life easier quicker and faster because at the end of the day time is money and if you've got the tools where you can check something quick and easy like a relative compression tester for example then you can actually and if you have an issue then you can go into it a little bit more but at least it gives you a quick idea of roughly where to go for rather than spending too long at one thing you know you can kind of continue with your diagnostics and go a bit quicker so what we're going to do is we're going to test the injectors in a few different ways now it's like everything there's more than one way to skin a cat but depending on your equipment depending on everything first thing we're going to do is, is use these gnome lights now you have to be careful with these because these are only leds at the end of the day and you know they will light up with very very little power not necessarily enough power to make the injectors work properly now if they are not working you've got an issue but if they're working still doesn't mean you haven't got an issue so just bear that in mind they're just back probed into the injectors um i just happen i got like i think eight of these or something you, you you know you can just do one at a time but if you're doing a three cylinder four cylinder whatever five cylinder engine when you have them all it's just a bit easier to see exactly what's going on so we're going to switch this engine on and we'll just see what these boys do right as you can see they all light now they might not be showing on camera but believe me they're all lighting the exactly the same way and uh yeah so we kind of oh did that did we just see something happen there? Or was that just when I was, did I see that stop a second? I'm gonna to have to look back on the video and actually see that. We'll just monitor for a few more minutes and we'll just see. Now maybe it was just me. I'm just gonna to have to go back on camera. Maybe it was just the way, I'm looking at the camera now and sometimes that's like that one just looked like it went off, but it believe me in real life it actually didn't. Yeah, these, this just the, the, the shutter speed of the camera. So actually, no, believe me, they're all, they all are flashing. The camera's just not picking that up properly. So yeah, the camera actually wasn't picking that up properly. So, uh, but believe me, in real life, they were all flashing quite happily. But like I said, you still cannot take that as gospel that the wiring is okay because these will light up with basically hardly any you know current voltage whatever um so don't take that as gospel if they're not working then you can kind of take it as gospel you know you've got an issue but just because they're working doesn't mean we can take it what we're going to do next is just a very quick ohms test on the injectors so we can just pull these out unclip our injectors and we'll just do a quick ohms test Right, what we're going to use for this is the Hubby Tools Auto Tester and the Hubby Tools uh, Test Lead Set. So, we've picked our right connections out that we need. In this particular case, it's the red ones. We just put that back probe on the actual injector once we've taken out the plug. I'm going to turn on my um, meter and we're going to check each individual one sorted. First thing we need to do is touch them together to make sure... Oh, that's my fingers. Touch them together and make sure we've got zero, which we do, and now we can actually connect them together. So on our first one, the one we're having absolutely no issues with, we've got 11 ohms. Now let's put it onto the one that we have a problem with. Now I say a problem, what I mean is we're having an issue with this according to the scan tool, and it's more or less the same. It is slightly different, but not enough to cause any issue. So let's go on to the third one now. Now, interestingly enough, that's the same as the first one. So the second one is slightly higher. I've just found out the injector specs for my friend Igor from Cars Exposed. I'll leave the link down below because my laptop's still a bit broken when I dropped it on the floor. But anyway, it's from 11 to 17 ohms. So like I thought, the injectors ohm out fine. They also test fine with this bad boy. So our injectors, as the actual injector itself, is 100% fine sorted right like i said we're going to show you a few different ways of testing now i showed this on my channel 
Oh, I don't know how long ago. It was a long time ago when I was doing parasitic draw videos. Now, technically, it is a tester for uh, relays. But it works for anything with a coil. So we can even test injectors with it. Now, again, you can't really be 100% with it. But it gives you a, a quick, rough idea. If, you conject, if your injector is completely shot, 100%, like, you know, really bad, yes. But again, if not, same as the no test. But it just gives you kind of an idea it's a quick and dirty test so i'm going to turn this on we're going to get this beside the injection you should see a little red light flashing like crazy on it because it detects the magnetic field that's how this works now you can see it there flashing put it on the other one and again flashing and then the third one and again flashing there we go sorted Oh, that's me moving it, not anything else. There we go. Sorted. So again, what this is really good for, you know, if, if the, there's no power at all getting to an injector, this will kind of tell you very, very quickly. But again, you know, it's just a quick and dirty test, essentially, just to kind of see what's going on. But as you can see, we're kind of okay on this. This one is a little bit higher resistance, which we're going to check out in a minute. But... You know, it just goes to show there's a, there's, there's a few ways you can quickly and easily see, you know, kind of what's going on. But don't rely on these 100% because uh, they'll only tell you, you know, if, the, if, if there's no power getting to it or if it's really, really bad. If it's kind of, you know, working but not working 100%, these and the gnome lights will still kind of show up, especially the gnome lights because, you know, if your wire is cut and there's only a couple of strands, there's a chance that that gnome light will still light up, but not enough actual current is getting into them to make them work properly. Um, so yeah, we're gonna show you another way now of testing them and uh, a kind of a, a bit better way of actually seeing exactly what's going on inside there. Right, the next thing we're gonna use is the Hobby Tools new universal digital prans, prans? <laughs> digital, Universal Digital Pressure Tester. Don't know what I'm saying. And it's the U HU35025. Sorted. Now there's all sorts of connections and clips and stuff in there. And then we've got all sorts of connections and clips for diesel compression. All sorts. And you know, this thing does, does a lot. But we're just going to show you how we're going to test the fuel system in this car. Right, so we've got it tied into the Schrader valve. We've got the um, 0 to 300 bar um, pressure transducer on it. We're going to turn it on. And what we're going to do first is we're just going to monitor the fuel pressure. Because with especially being a digital readout, it's just a lot easier. So low fuel pressure, 300 bar sensor on it. And let's turn this bad boy on. The car, that is. Right, so what we can do is we can monitor this uh, with a, well with an analog and a digital uh, scale. You can see it holds the max pressure and it just gives us the light reading. Now, we, I know we've already done this, but we're going to do a different test in a minute. And this is why I'm using this machine. So what you can do is you can actually just monitor this to make sure everything is okay first. Make sure it's not dropping. Make sure it's not doing anything it shouldn't do. But we know that the fuel pressure in this case is okay. So I'm going to turn this off now and we're going to do an injector balance test. What we're going to use for that is this plus this. So we're going to use both of them. So I'm just going to set this up first, just plug it into the battery, take off one of the, um, one of the um, injector leads and then just put these on. And then once I get everything set up, I'll show you how to test it. Now you do have to be careful with this test because really you want to take the injectors out because all you're going to be doing is squirting fuel down into the cylinders and it, you know, it could lock up the engine, it could bend valves, it could do all sorts. So take your injectors out and uh, you know, put them into a cup and once you do that you can even measure the amount of fuel if you really want to be precise. But believe me, for what we're doing, you know, just this readout is going to be good enough for what we need in this particular case. So I'm going to turn this to number two. I'm going to get these injectors set up oh, and then we're going to see what reading we have. Right, so we have it on and it's about, let it kind of set. It's not going to really settle, but we need to get kind of an idea. So we say it's between three and a half to four bar. It's kind of fluctuating between. 
Right, so what I'm going to do is press the pulse button, which is going to pulse the injector and it's going to change our reading. So let me just, we'll try and get it when it's say three and a half bar or something like that. Right, that's now, it's about three and a half bar when I pressed it. It's 2.7 now. Just let me do it again. And it's gone down to two bar. So we remember them numbers. Right, I've written down the numbers. We're on injector number two now. Essentially what this test is telling us is how much the injector is letting fuel fuel. If they're all more or less letting the same fuel through, we can kind of say, well, the injectors are good. So let me just press this again when it gets to about, drops to about 2.7, yeah. Press it again when it's about 2.7. And again, around two bar. So practically exactly the same as the last one, you know, within reason. Very, very similar. So I think we can kind of say without a shadow of a doubt that the injectors are good. I will do the third one. I won't film it. If I come across any uh, weird things on the third one, I'll let you know. Like I said, don't do this with the injectors in situ. This is the third one now. I'm going to test it on camera. We're practically the same pressure. Goes to about 2.7, yeah. I mean, it is hitting 2.7. It's flashing between 2.7 and 3 like it was before. Do it again, around 2, 2.2, yeah. I mean, they're practically exactly the same as the uh, other injectors. So we can very confidently say now, that our injectors are good, sorted. I'm gonna leave the compression test, mechanical compression test for the next video. But at least now we can say our injectors are good. So what's the next thing that we should check? The next video is gonna be a mechanical uh, compression test with this bad boy. So after that, what would you do next? So look, hope it helps. Help you enjoy in this uh, series. It's great fun for me to do it. It's really interesting seeing other people's approach and what they would do. It really is. I think it's awesome. So there we go. Look, hope it helps. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget, links up here, links down below. But most importantly, don't forget, get your hands dirty. See you for the next one. Sorted.